Now let's come to projections on convex sets. Uh, finding a projection is a very special type of optimization problem and in this lecture we will show uh, existence of a solution, uniqueness of a solution and how to characterize a solution and this will help us in the future when we will discuss about existence of um, separating hyperplanes between convex sets. So um, let's formulate the whole thing as a theorem. So let H be a finite dimensional in a product space and let C be a subset of H which is um, non-empty closed and convex then let x be not in C, so in H without C. Um, then the situation is as follows. We have this convex set C here and we have a point outside of x and we, will we, we want to find the projection on the set uh, C. This will be a point here, since x is outside, it will be on the boundary of C, and um, the whole thing will be um, this point here, and we will show that this point is unique for a convex set C, and that it can be characterized by um, such a hyperplane here, which is orthogonal to this uh, vector. And so let's uh, let's formulate this. Then there exists a unique projection. Uh, I write P in C of X, which and uh, now the, the, the optimization problem I mentioned uh, at the very beginning, which minimizes um, norm p tilde, uh, since I don't want to confuse the solution with the, the variable of this optimization problem, p tilde minus x over p tilde in c. What can we also say? Uh, as I mentioned, we have this hyperplane here, which is characterized by this um, by this vector here. Um, so we have um, if we if we take any y and c, we have y minus p, p minus x. So the inner product between those two vectors, and you see um, if you put them at the common point, uh, for example, if you if you shift this xp, uh, yeah, this vector from x to p um, here to p, then the angle between them is less than 90 degrees. So this means the inner product between those two is greater than or equal to zero for all um, y in c. Um, so basically we have three things to show. We have to show existence, we have to show uniqueness, and we have to show this property um, for the solution of this optimization problem. And I mention here um, the properties of, of H because they go in at, at very special places in the proof. So let's look at the proof. Um, so first uh, we are looking at existence. And for this, actually, we don't need convexity here. So um, instead, we only need finite dimensionality for our proof, uh, and not, in not, not necessarily in general. 
Um, but then things get more complicated, so I leave this out here. Um, and a closeness of the set is enough to show existence of some point, but it then will, in general, not be unique. So let's uh, formulate this. So since we know that um, C is non-empty, this is this assumption here, um, we know that the infimum of um, p tilde minus x, norm of p tilde minus x, with p tilde, uh, p tilde in C is less than plus infinity. And it's, of course, um, non-negative because the norm is always non-negative. So we can write it like this. Um, so this will be a real number, a non-negative real number. Um, actually, it will be a positive real number since we know that x is not in, in C and C is closed, but uh, that's not important right now. Um, so it will be a real number. So since we still know that this infimum is attained, so it can be like, um, it can be that there is only a sequence which, a sequence of of p, p tilde uh, so that this goes to the infimum. Um, uh, either that or uh, there is a there is actually a p tilde which, which converges to the infimum. But in any case, uh, there exists a sequence. So let, um, now I call this pn. So this will be um, a sequence in uh, C, such that uh, this goes to the infimum. So that we, we know this since this is a real number, such that um, Pn minus x uh, goes to the infimum of P tilde minus x with P tilde in C. Um, if there exists a single um, point which attains this, then we can e this can even be the, the constant sequence. So even there is no problem. Okay? So, what can we say about the sequence? Uh, we know that um, this, uh, the, this norm here uh, ten, uh, goes to a finite number here, so that... Um, uh, this, uh, since this is uh, this is a real number, so that there exists some big number n, uh, or potentially big number n, uh, natural number, such that p n minus x is less or equal than this infimum. Uh, I should really have given this a name. Anyway, this infimum, let's say plus one because it doesn't matter, and this is uh, a real number. So, and this holds for all n greater or equal than capital N. What does this mean? This means that the sequence Pn is bounded. Okay, so this sequence is bounded. And now we use the finite dimensionality of our spaces to obtain that there is a um, there is a uh, the convergent subsequence. So there exists a sequence p n k and p n k uh, subsequence of p n. And this is uh, k and this is n, and such that p and k converges to a point p, which happens to be the projection, which we see, which we'll see later, and bounded sequences converges to some point uh, have always a convergent subsequence uh, convergence to to h. 
and here we use finite dimensionality by by the way and for if we want if you would like to generalize this to infinite dimensional inner product spaces then you would have to take weak convergence here and you would have to assume that your that your inner product space is complete so that it is a Hilbert space and then there you have that um, any bounded sequence has a weakly convergent subsequence and then uh, you need even convexity to show that this weakly convergent subsequence has a limit point within uh, the set C. So uh, things get, more, get a bit more delicate in the case of infinite dimensional spaces, but luckily we don't have to care. Okay, what do we know about P? So we know since C is closed, and we have a sequence in C. Um, I wrote this here. Um, we know that P is also in C. And uh, subsequence obviously is also in a sequence in C. Uh, that's good. And we know that... Uh, what do we know? We have P and K minus X since uh, the distance to a point x is a continuous function, we know that this goes to norm p minus x, okay, because p and k goes to p, and, and uh, the, this, the, the whole thing is a continuous function of this argument, and therefore uh, the limit transfers to the function value. But we also know, so this is like continuity, We also know that p and k minus x is a, is a, sub a subsequence of p and minus x, and this converges to the infimum of, I have to write it again, p tilde minus x with p tilde in C. And since we know these two convergence relations, we know that these things here are equal. So, um, p minus x is equal to the infimum of this thing. And therefore, we know that since p is in c, p solves our optimization problem. This is exactly the minimization of this functional over p tilde in c. So p is a projection. Okay, no convexity used here. So we have used finite dimensionality. Um, we actually have not yet used the inner product space here. Um, for, I don't think we need this for existence. Uh, we have used that C is non-empty and closed, but not convexity. And we have not used this. Uh, so X not in C. We have not used this, and actually this is not, not necessary, but the theorem gets trivial if we take a point x and c. Okay, now let's come to um, this property here. And after that we, we talk about uniqueness, because uniqueness is, is easy from there. So, so this, the, the property, the characterization. Okay, take the point y in C. Then, now we use convexity, um, take some lambda between 0 and 1, then by convexity of C, um, we have um, 1 minus lambda P. So we assume that we have any projection, anything which minimizes this here. Uh, we, don't, we don't use the construction of this point here. Um, um, so let take, let's take 1 minus lambda P uh, plus lambda Y. And since P is in C and Y is in C, uh, this thing is also in C. By the projection property, so P is a projection, we have that 
norm p minus x is less or equal than norm of 1 minus lambda p plus lambda y minus x. Since this point is in c and p minimizes um, this, this distance to x overall p tilde in c. And we can even uh, add uh, squared norms here. Since now we are going to use the property that we are in an inner product space, and the first commandment for inner product spaces is square every norm. Um, so this is equal to p minus x plus lambda y minus p within this norm here. And now we actually use this that this norm is derived from a from an inner product. So this is p minus x squared plus two lambda p minus x y minus p plus lambda squared norm of y minus p squared. Okay, and now we see that we have this norm of p minus x on both sides. So um, we have, uh, we, we, we just take, the colors are distinguishable, we take this here and we divide by lambda. So we do, do divide by lambda and therefore we actually have to choose lambda not equal to zero um, uh, so that we can divide by lambda. So we have zero less or equal than two p minus x y minus p. Okay plus lambda y minus p norm squared. And now we let lambda go to zero. Um, so we, we need lambda greater than zero, but not equal to zero. Um, so that this, the, the right, the, this other term here on the right hand side goes away. And we can also divide by two <clears throat> while we add it. So we have p minus x, y minus p is greater or equal than zero and this looks very much like this inequality here. So we have established our property and this holds for any projection p. So now we can go to uniqueness. So let um, p and p prime in c be projections. Then we have this property here, and we can we can choose. Uh, so here we use that for the first we have we use that p is a projection, so p is a projection. Um, then we can use p prime here for in, instead of y because this is an element of C. So we have p prime minus p p minus x greater than greater or equal than zero. And we can use that p prime as a projection. And then we use p instead of y, since p is also an element of c. Um, so we have p minus p prime, p prime minus x greater or equal than zero. And if we add this, so if we take this inequality plus this inequality, we see that, um, uh, I just change and uh, just read from from right to left. Um, we have p prime minus p, and here we have p minus x plus x minus p prime. So p minus x plus x minus minus p prime, and this is minus since uh, minus x. No, oh, this color minus x and plus x go away. We have p prime minus p, p minus p prime. So this is norm of p prime minus p squared. And since minus this norm squared is uh, greater or equal than zero, we, norm this, we know that this norm squared is less or equal than zero. So we have p prime is equal to p. So for any two projections, we have that they are equal, 
so we have uniqueness. And this concludes the proof of our projection theorem, and we have actually solved, basically, um, the problem, not numerically, but we have established what is, what is very important to a mathematician, existence, uniqueness, and some characterizing property. And um, our aim is to, to do this for more general types of problems, and the projection theorem will help us on our way.